Hey everybody, I want to take a few minutes this morning to uh, give a quick update now that I've been spending a little over a year working in uh, my daughter's copy, um, as I have one also for my son, and I'll get one for any future children we have, of a Bible to take color-coded notes and thoughts in and put prayers in according to each book and little introductions and little notes and, and memoirs uh, for other books. So as I was about to start 1 Corinthians today, and I wrote my little intro and started to take notes there, I thought that I would do a little quick review and let you know how my process goes. Um, if you're unfamiliar, in the descriptions below, you can check out the links as to how I do my color coding system, but there's many different ways out there you can do it, and why I prefer uh, Pigma Micron 005 archival ink pens, as well as uh, why I think so highly of this Bible that I chose when I was hunting for the what I thought was the best note-taking Bible. This is the ESV Wide Margin Reference Bible on Top Grain Leather. They have them now in Heirloom Edition, which is even better, but it wouldn't be uh, red letter, uh, as well as there's a lot of good new good ones coming out, and there are some others out there that are really good. The only reason I go with a double column here is because it has great inside margins. Otherwise, I believe note-taking Bibles should be single column, and where you have it there. If you're interested in one, and this one's a little bit pricey for you, um, what you may want to look into is, as of right now, it is, it is June 2016. By the end of July 2016, there's going to be a Bible coming out from Crossway, uh, which is going to be a 9-point font, as opposed to what's been out there as a 7.5-point font. And that's, that's the readability of a 9-point font, although it's probably showing up blurry. I think it's a good font size of a single column journaling Bible. So it's going to be a little taller than the ones that have existed in the past, but still have that same two inch width for a single column and have that cream colored paper. And you can get them in hardcover too, so you can take notes when you sit in the pews uh, under your pastor as well. But essentially, I wanted to show what I've done. Now, this is the uh, prayer that I ended up doing according to the Book of Romans on my daughter's behalf. I didn't have as much room on this one. This is the intro to 1 Corinthians that I put together. And the way that I come about doing these prayers at the end, this is the one I wrote yesterday uh, according to the Book of John, is I'll go through the book. Okay, so here's the beginning of John. This was the prayer that I wrote for her according to Luke. I'll give a little intro. And then I'm going through, and I have my own system. I have double stars mean something, triple stars, exclamation points mean something. In some cases, I circle around it, and that kind of draws my attention to it. So I, I spend a lot of time on a chapter. I probably spend, to go methodically and to go carefully, and take a lot of detailed color-coded notes, underlining and then connecting the thought to the color, and underlining or circling and connecting to the color. I probably spend about an hour and 15 minutes, maybe an hour and a half, on each chapter. So this is something that's going to take many, many years, but it's a blessing to my soul to really absorb the truth like this and to continually do it, to do a copy for her and then to do a copy for my son and then if, you know, maybe do another copy down the road, maybe become a 20, 30 year project, I will get to know this Bible very well, where these parts are and what my thoughts were and how some areas were really heavy with red and some areas were really heavy with blue. Um, and just remembering where things jump out and pop out. But essentially what I do to design the prayer is once I've finished the book, I go back through and I look for all the things that I gave like a triple star to, or I look for things that I had circled. And then I just grab a scratch piece of paper that I'm going to end up throwing away. And I did throw this one away, that's why it's crumpled up. And I jot down all the things that are major about this book that I would want my daughter to know. And the prayer at the end ends up becoming a summary of the whole book. And so there's going to be 66 prayers in this book that are going to be as detailed as they can be. So I know I have this, this much space for the book of John to write a prayer. I came up with um, this many notes according to the whole book of John, the things that really stood out the most. And then I etched them out, and then I wrote very small and very carefully, trying to stay within a nice line format, the whole prayer. And what I do the next day is then, then once I've finished writing it, I actually pray the prayer out loud, asking the Lord to take it seriously for her behalf. Then I just begin another book and start the whole process all over. It's been a real blessing to my soul. If you have multiple kids, 
I would suggest that you do the New Testament for each kid first. And then, when you have other copies, because each of my children are going to get their own version of this, um, then you would get into the Old Testament. And as I go through Genesis, uh, I might do Genesis 1 for our daughter, then Genesis 1 for our son, then Genesis 1 for any other child we may have, and they may kind of go parallel. Because if I don't live long enough to complete these projects, I'd at least like them to have a full New Testament full of prayers and notes, and at least know that I worked my way through for each of them. Finally, I might suggest that you might want to get an heirloom edition, because this is the top green leather. An heirloom edition, which is goatskin, which is super, super nice and super fancy, and that you might want to privately work on as well for your spouse. And if I have time in my life, I may do that down the road. Um, but you'll be working in the same format Bible for the rest of your life. You'll have spent some money on it, but it will have been worth it. It will have been a blessing. And you will have really gotten to know your Bible, and you'll have left a great reference and a great memoir for the people that you love in your life, and you will have given yourself a great study experience. Grab yourself a good study Bible, grab yourself some good commentaries, grab yourself a Greek and Hebrew dictionary, and really plunge into God's Word, and really make it memorable for the people that you love and care about. And one last thing, and this is totally up to you, I keep it a secret. My daughter and our son and any other children and my wife will never know that I'm going to work on this. It may be something that they get after I pass. It may be something that they get when they graduate high school or they get married. But that's the goal, is to let the loved ones in your life know how much you love the Lord and how much you want to show them that you love them and you want them to know the Lord as he has revealed himself. Um, enjoy this process. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to my soul. It'll be a blessing to theirs, I pray. Amen.